Back in my old life, I always wondered what was around the corner I didn't take. Down the road I didn't go. That's how I ended up here. Up to my elbows in machine grease rigging bombs. <laughs> Relax, my friend. I got plenty of experience blowing shit up. I got a handle on death and the instruments thereof, and no desire to see the infinite darkness claim any of us quite yet. These mechanical servants of the Reaper will stay still and silent till I'm good and ready to push that button. Traveling the big countries taught me everything from bull riding to bonsai, enough to cause a man to lose his appetite for destruction. But circumstances require us to yield to the greater good, even when that greater good isn't all that pretty. Road here said I'd be pitching in with soft-shell lobster season. Instead, I found nightmare country. Maybe the very rotten heartland of it. But I'm philosophizing. Life is sacred. Every moment is precious. Which brings us right back around to blowing up dead guys. I've got no shortage of time or ideas. What I'm lacking is the nuts and bolts of it. I could fill a shopping cart down Main Street. But getting out there and back, that's what's kicking my ass, my friend. My passion for this life is my greatest weakness. Out there on the road, I found serene understanding of just what there is, which is more than I could ever want. And life is too sacred to miss even one single sunrise from nursing a black eye. That said, indifference is the greatest crime. I never turn my back on decent folks in trouble. And if I learned anything in Baton Rouge, aside from damn good bourbon chicken, it was that old man do I hate zombies. Yeah, I tell you, there's a real enlightenment to be found on the open road, with no witness but the cinemascope sky. Solitude's the only real test of character. To be out there on your own is to see deep inside yourself. But soul-searching means nothing to those who don't have one. And solitude is no fortress against the walking dead. No. We need to stick together. This is a test of character forged in fire. I've been tinkering with these instruments of death, and I think they'll do the trick. Still need a test run, though. Preferably somewhere we don't knock over any picket fences.
Bring this to the rendezvous point and get the hell back to Dodge. Don't stop for red lights, don't stop for a smoke, don't stop for a piss. Comprende, amigo? Wait, wait! What the fuck? Wait! We're not done, amigo! Listen, don't fuck this up. Focus. Focus. Leave this circle and you gotta watch your back. Plenty of creepy crawlers out there, no voodoo to keep you safe. But this is what you signed up for, right? There's more to the morning light than clean living, handing out flyers on the subway and trying to get vertical with Miss Dreadlocks from Orientation Week. We're harbingers of change, dude. We're prophets of mutation. We're disciples of doom. But change won't happen unless we up and act. Sure, Rome wasn't built in a single day, but it sure as hell wasn't built by deadbeat procrastinators lazing around on their asses, smoking weed, either. Just get it done. Bees on me 24-7, dude. That's how this thing works. Shit rolls downhill. And the boss has made it pretty clear this is important, and it's gotta be taken care of now, not later. Not when you feel like it. Toot fucking sweet. Comprende? Everybody's gotta pull their fucking weight, dude. Anybody else is just dead weight. Hell yeah. We're with the morning light. You've seen the flyers, you've seen our commercials, you've probably even talked to some of our good people. Can't escape the light, my friend. It's all fucking encompassing. Like air. We're like air. Breathe it. We were, you know, just passing through with our little band of merry fucking hippies. When that shit rolled in from the sea like whipped cream on a blueberry pie. Beaumont's got a direct line with Marcard himself. Knows him personally. That's like knowing someone who knew Jesus, you know? The red telephone to our motherfucking savior. So, you guys, you run around like you're young gods. Like you rule... What's up? Was that thing? Jesus Christ, man, I'm shaking like a fucking leaf. Oh, fuck. The package. Fuck. I'm stuck out here until this fucking situation is being... Jesus Christ, she's gonna fucking freak when he finds out. And Beaumont, man, fucking Beaumont. Shit rolls downhill. I'm a dead man walking, a dead man. Hey, hey. Hey, you got, like, superpowers, right? If you get that package back, you're in, man. In like fucking Flynn. That's awesome, man. Jesus Christ, I figured I was done for. I... Uh, mind making the delivery? Must have fucked up my leg real good. I can barely walk. It's not far. Just over in the tunnel. There's a drop-off point in a crevice in the wall where we leave all packages. Well, nobody needs to know, right? Just you and me. I'll put in a good word with Shay. I'll put in the fucking word with Shay. Deal? You didn't tell Shay, did you? Huh. 
Oh, man. Thanks. Kingsmith is not a town without its blight, its fallow seasons. In times past, these lands have borne bad fruit. The demons are plucking forgotten apples that should have been left to rot on the boughs of Kingsmith's tree, planted in unsanctified soil. By apples, I mean bodies. The tree represents, uh, graves, and the unsanctified soil means, well, unsanctified soil. Unmarked graves. Mass graves. The operated with rationale are illuminated ancestors. I'm sure of it. I mean, who am I to question these men of action? Those men of God? Even if they did stumble in their faith, well, that can happen to all of us. We forget to say grace. We lie. We cheat. We fornicate. We do worse. We have more immediate concerns than being ministers of past sins. What they're digging up is something that should remain buried, hidden from inquisitive eyes and wagging tongues. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust.
Well, now, I'm not much fit for entertaining, but I reckon you ain't much in the mood for hospitality either, am I right? Oh, I'm not a big talker, eh? I'm used to that from a surly husband and kids more comfortable with kicking a ball around and having a conversation with their ma. Name's Nama. Nama Creed. Raised a family up here before this dungeon thick fog came took him as my story. Helen sent you over to check on me, I reckon. Now, your concern is wicked kind, but I don't need any pitying. I got my shotgun, I got what's left of my wits. I'll manage. Now, this hullabaloo began after the Lady Margaret came back. My husband, Larry, the others, we all thought that they'd gone missing out there, that the sea took them. The day they came back, whole town could finally breathe again. But then came that fog, like it was following them back to shore. "'Twas right,' said they, "'such birds to slay that bring the fog and mist." Don't ask me where I got that from. Probably heard it on Oprah. Never got to ask Larry about what happened in those weeks they were gone. Been around gift horses long enough not to look him in the mouth. He was back. Thought life would go on the way life goes on, one day at a time. When the fog lifts enough to see the Lady Margaret laid up in the harbor, covered in that red seaweed, I always wonder if he'd still be here if I had. <laughs> 